I'm interested to see how uh, thought evoking this next video is going to be. This is Sam Harris criticizes Lex Friedman over Conway Kanye West. Ye, this is from Lex Clip. So of course I'll link it in the chat so you guys can follow it if you guys would like. Go ahead and leave a comment. I'll like the stream because I like Lex. And I thought this was already interesting. I started to watch it on my own, but then realized like, wait a second, I should watch this with you guys because it is like guilty by association, I think is sort of the topic. And so I thought we could have some, you know, good discourse over it. So let's go ahead and watch that together. Okay, and I'll link it in the chat. One thing that I do regret, one thing I have not sorted out for myself is how to navigate the, the professional and personal pressure that gets applied at this moment where you have a friend or an acquaintance or someone you know who's behaving badly in public or, or, or behaving badly, behaving in a way that you think is bad in public. And they have a public platform where they're influencing a lot of people. And you have your own public platform where you're constantly getting asked to comment on what this this friend or or acquaintance or colleague is doing. Mm. Just okay, so just a reminder for anyone who doesn't know. So Sam Harris, when I was growing up, was like the one of the atheists along with like Richard Doc uh, Richard yeah, Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens and they were like the dudes, right? The dudes. And then of course Sam Harris, everybody knows him. He's written a lot of books, he's done a lot of things, he's done a lot of debates. Um, he's been battling creationists for a bit. He was my childhood. And at the same time, he isn't much of my adulthood. I stopped engaging with Sam Harris's work a long time ago when it started to feel very virtue signally to me or rooted in a lot of fear. And again, fear is the root of all evil to me. So when he came out very afraid of Muslims, I got a little frustrated because look, as a queer person myself, I am frustrated by all religious people and studies are showing that religion is damaging our brains but it is also if you are in the religion and it's working for you it's going to be very helpful to you so for me I always um I checked out a Sam Harris's work a long time ago but of course I always check out of people's work if they dedicate their life to too much fear even Richard Dawkins my partner and I were just talking about it how much like we loved Richard Dawkins but at the same time when he became the guy who just started putting billboards up to like target Christians it's like boring it's like is this all atheism is it's just like dunking on creationists so boring like how boring but at the same time like yeah you gotta stick you gotta stick to it so I'm very curious what Sam Harris says about this because again he's gone in more of a um he's been associated with Jordan Peterson he's been associated with the Weinstein brothers he's been associated with a lot of people so it'll be very interesting to see what he has to say about associating with like I assume Kanye West, since that's the title. I haven't known what I think is ethically right about the choices that seem forced on us in, at moments like this. So like I've, I've criticized you in public about the, your, your interview with Kanye. Mm -hmm. Now in the case, in, in that case, I reached out to you in private first and told you exactly what I thought. And then when I was gonna get asked in public or when I was touching that topic on my uh, podcast, I more or less said the same thing that I said to you in private, right? Now, that was how I navigated that moment. Um, I did the same thing with with Elon, uh, at least on at the beginning. Um, you know, this, we have, we have maintained a good vibe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Conrad said, Sam Harris lost me when he said some cultures are better than others. How? That's literally true, though. Like, what is he, what did he mean by it when he said it? Because like some cultures are better than others. Some people are better than others in terms of belief because we're all coming through it via the ego. So obviously not all cultures are good for all people. Therefore, they would be subjectively good for others. Was he saying objectively? Like some cultures are objectively better than others? I mean, I would argue some cultures are objectively worse than others, but not necessarily objectively better than others, if that makes sense. Because once you hit a threshold of good enough, like everything's the same to me. It's only the ones that are like, 99% of harm, you know, that I have issues with. Well, ancient cultures transformed into modern culture. Oh, sorry. You're not talking to me. Um, you're talking to somebody else. My bad. Vibes, which is, which is not what I Another, say about Elon. But <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, I disagree. Oh, he meant Middle Eastern culture was inferior to European culture. Well, for him, it would be. Right? I think for him, it would be. Right? Um, and that's the, that's, I could understand that, right? I could understand it. 
I would say like Middle Eastern culture is superior in a lot of different ways compared to European culture. But if you are a modern, modern secularist, like Middle Eastern culture is not going to be your friend. It's not going to be very good at facilitating your joy. It's going to be counterintuitive to that. But if you're into tradition and family and religion and structure and being one with the community, then I think Middle Eastern culture is obviously superior to European culture. Like Middle Eastern culture, if you're really in it and it's like a vibe and like you're you're good with it like it's a vibe right but if you're in any way different from it it's very hard you know what I mean in European culture like you could go from one country to another and have a different experience um yeah he was saying objectively yeah that's silly like objectively I don't know how Middle Eastern cultures wouldn't be great for Middle Eastern people or people who believed the same if you believe it it's probably gonna go good for you if you don't believe it it'd go bad for you you know what I mean I agree I would never want to live in, a, in the Middle East. I'm saying we need to be open-minded except we can learn from everyone. Yes, I think we can learn from everyone, but ultimately learn from ourselves that none of us have the answer. But some people, like I said, I think you could say objectively some cultures are worse than others, but I don't know about being better than others, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? I do think some parts of the Middle East are incredibly suffering and they are degenerate as a Middle Eastern woman myself. And I think that's clear, but I think that also is um, pretty commonly found everywhere. The issues the Middle East faced, Europe faced at one point and still faces today in some ways. So I'm not completely convinced that Europeans have a ground to stand on in that regard. In terms of modern, the modern world, like I think it'd be kind of dope if France stayed secular, obviously. Like I think, Again, in an ideal world, we'd all be able to go to some place in the world that eventually our grandkids wouldn't have to migrate out of because a new person came in. But that's just how humans work. Generations migrate to different places. Culture changes over time. And the place we once knew isn't the same. And that's just the reality. You can't change that. But in an ideal world, it'd be great if like I knew I was always safe as a queer person in a particular country. Like I always knew that that wouldn't be the reason I would experience like a hate crime. Or it'd be really nice to know that I was a Muslim and in a different country, I would be totally safe. Or if I was a woman or if I was a white man or if I was black or if I was, it'd be really nice if we could all go somewhere where this wouldn't be the reason we were attacked. But that doesn't really work, right? That doesn't really work that way because humans don't work that way. When you talk about the Middle East, what are your thoughts on Dubai? I would love to visit Dubai. Obviously, there are things there that I wouldn't be a fan of. <clears throat> And then at the same time, I wouldn't mind visiting, but I wouldn't want to live there. I mean, Dubai is going to be a, it's a contender. It's a contender. It's going to move on to be a contender in the world. I think a lot of people could have a lot of good reasons to live there. Um, but again, like uh, it's very, it's like a very specific vibe. So you have to like, like the vibe. Otherwise, it's not going to be one for you. I know some people uh, who live around ish Dubai and um, they get along perfectly fine. But it is one of those things where there's a cultural expectation of behavior, right? Like everywhere else. There's always a cultural expectation of behavior. You know? I agree with you because good vibes in the moment, there's a deep core of good vibes that persists through time between you and Elon, and I would argue probably between some of the other folks you mentioned. I, I think with Brett, I failed to reach out in private uh, to the degree that I should have. And we, we never really had... A, 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 we. We had tried to set up a conversation in private that, that never happened, but um, there was some communication, but it would have been much better for me to have made more of an effort in private than I did mm. before it spilled out into public. Mm. And I would say that's true with other people as well. What kind of interaction in private do you think you should have with Brett? Because my case would be beforehand and now still. Are they talking about the Weinsteins, Brett Weinstein? The case I would like, and this part of the criticism you sent my way, maybe it's useful to go to that direction. Actually, let, let's go to that direction because I think I disagree with your criticism as you stated publicly. But this You're is talking very, about con your of your con interview with Kanye. Yeah, yeah. The thing you criticized me for is actually the right thing to do with Brett. Okay, you you said Lex could have spoken with Kanye in such a way as to have pr produced a useful document. He didn't do that because he has a fairly naive philosophy about the power of love. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Let's see if you can maintain that philosophy in the present. Let's go. Yeah. He see, it, no, it's beautiful. Uh, it, he seemed to think that if he just got through the minefield to the end of the conversation, where the two of them still... Ooh, were... you know what would be great? Actually, now that I'm reading your comments, what would be great is if... This is what I think we would all want in some ways. Once we fought for something, it wouldn't change. Like, we know we were safe. That's another way to think about it. Once we attained female, like, bodily autonomy rights, so, like, abortion rights, it wouldn't change. And once we attained gay marriage, it wouldn't change. Once we attained, like, these civil rights, it wouldn't change. But that's not how the world works. There is a real, like, there is a real reality. There is a possibility in which America could go back to having no gay marriage, gay people can't work, trans people can't exist, women can't get abortions. Like, there is a chance, like, segregation could come back or like we could have another civil war i think that's what we all would like like i know for my catholic family they would love a reality where they can just live somewhere and not think about being persecuted for being christian or catholic and i know like muslims who wish the same and i know black people who wish the same i think we would all just like to know like hey once we get here is this like the promised land where like nothing bad's gonna happen again it's like no because humans exist and humans are going to think they're better than you. And then they're all going to fight each other. And then you're going to think you're better than them. And like you're going to fight them. And it's just one of those things where it would be so nice to have a place where we could just, we fought this. Like we don't have to, but life isn't linear. Civil rights isn't linear. It goes like this and it goes like this. It's not linear. It changes over time, right? The land of the free was built on this idea, but it wasn't. And then it isn't even now. And what does it mean to be free? And oh, even my partner was telling me, he's like, hey, just so you know, like we do not have freedom of speech laws here. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, you are in Europe. You're in Croatia. You cannot, you cannot think you're American here. And I was like, oh. And he was like making it really clear to me, like things I can't joke about in public, things I can't say, things that I definitely don't want to make jokes about, things that like, hey, you have to be very careful. Like, don't do these things. And I was like, okay. And like, that's fine. That's how they keep the peace. But also, it's very different than being an American. I, I never think about what I'm saying in public, except if I want to get, like, looked at funny by the people around me. But it's never, like, the government that I'm really afraid of. But here it's, like, policing, which is interesting. And I'm not saying, like, it's awful or it's bad or it's good. I'm just like, okay, different bubble, different Britney, right? Like, whatever it takes. Feeling good about one another and they can hug it out, that would be, by definition, a success. So... Let me make the case for this power of love philosophy, right? And first of all, I, I love you, Sam. You're still an inspiration and somebody I deeply admire. Okay. Back at you. Uh, the, to me, in the case of Kanye, it's not only that you get to the conversation and have hugs. It's that the display that you're willing... If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you're saying I'm European, I have no clue what you're talking about. It's like the Nazi Hitler dog. Right. He actually got in trouble with the law there. Right. It's like Nazi jokes or certain kinds of racist jokes or certain kind of like propagandic jokes. Like in America, you can be a KKK member. You can express racist beliefs. You can do all these things. But in certain parts, there's like certain things you can't do. You know what I mean? Even Croatia, they have modesty laws in the city. So if you're not in the beach, they'll tell tourists like you, we have modesty laws in the normal like mall shopping parts of town. America like has modesty laws, but not like that. Not like in the same way. Like, have you seen Walmart videos? Like people go to the store looking crazy. So it's stuff like that where like you could get in trouble versus in America, you can't get in trouble for doing a Nazi salute as a pug. Like a dog can't get in trouble for that. That's not a reality. You know what I mean? So I'm just like things like that, you know? To do that has mm -hmm. power. So even if it doesn't end in hugging, the actual, the turning the other cheek, the act of turning the other cheek itself communicates both to Kanye later and to the rest of the world that we should have empathy and compassion towards each other. There is power to that. I, that. Maybe that is naive, but I believe in the power of that. So it's not that I'm trying to convince Kanye that some of his ideas are wrong, right? but I'm trying to illustrate that just the act of listening and truly trying to understand another human being, that is opens people's minds to actually questioning their own beliefs more. It takes them right. out of the dogmatism, deescalates. Yeah, you know, in the 
in the last few years, I've really tried this where I've met with people and I've tried to really see them be like they're on a journey and everyone is. So ultimately, I believe everyone's on a journey and everyone's just like on their path and everyone's going to do what they're going to have to do. Like Andrew Tate has to be Andrew Tate because like if he wasn't Andrew Tate, who else could he have been, right? Like, yes, he can make a decision to be someone else, but can you? Think about yourself. Think about yourself when you're like, if I could just get out of bed on time, if I could just do this on time, but amplify it all the way to being like a person with an ideology, right? You think it's easy for them to just not be that person, but then why can't you get up for work on time? Why can't you just do your school assignment? Why can't you just get over your shit, right? And so that's the issue is like every time in your own life you think, why can't I just do this thing, amplify it or put it into someone else's shoes? Why can't Kanye just do this? Why can't so-and-so just do this? Why can't Sneeko just do this? Why can't? Because for the same reason you can't figure out how to just do this. It's not within you. It's not the person you are right now. It's not within your toolbox. It's not how you see yourself. It's not the relationship you're having with reality. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. So yes, you can judge all those other people for quote unquote not doing what you can do, but really what can't you do that someone else can do? And have a, have a, like a mirror and look at yourself and think, well, shoot, you know what I mean? Like what? I can still hate Andrew Tate the way I can hate serial killers. Yeah, that's your burden to carry. But I don't know why you would hate them. Like, do you mean literally hate or you mean like gay hate, right? Because like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's a funny way to go through life. But you do you, right? Um, I mean, I also like dislike Tate immensely. Like I could use the word hate. I don't think I mean it in the same way you do. I also don't hate serial killers like that because I think they're like really damaged humans. So I'm just more upset that I ran into them. Because a serial killer is kind of like a bear. It's just not someone you're re you can't reason with a serial killer, like a real, like the way I think of a serial killer. So, you know, oh, gay hate. Okay, we're good. We're just gay judging here. I just don't like Sneeko. I want him out of my life. He appears everywhere I look. Ugh, they all do. It's just how content creation works. They're everywhere. And they want to be, by the way. Sneeko wants to be everywhere. Um, all these content creators want to be everywhere. It's fair, you know? But it's like Kanye. I wish Kanye would just get his shit together. We can't because it's not like his journey. So I do the same thing that Lex does is I like try to meet people where they are. But this year I decided to take a stand and be a little bit more critical because people were like, well, what is your prescription? What is your idea? What do you not like? But the moment they found out what I didn't really like in a real way, they were like, whoa, not my people. No, no, no. You have to hate the people we hate. And I was like, uh, I mean, I, I just don't like anybody. I like everyone on the surface, but I don't agree with how most people live their lives unless they're in the healthy zone. And most of the people that I interact with on the internet are not in the healthy zone. So how do you feel about Leo Skeppy? I mean, did you see the video I did on him? I did a live stream on Leo Skeppy. He's not in the healthy zone. I don't like him. I don't like the way he lives his life. He's not in the healthy zone. Again, if you're in the healthy zone, I'm most likely I got no problem with you. But as long as you're in the unhealthy zone, I'm going to raise an eyebrow at you as like, I'll, I'll recognize you're unhealthy. But if you can't recognize you're unhealthy, then like, you know what I mean? That's where I'm like, that's annoying. Like, I feel for Kanye. I love Kanye's music. I feel for Kanye. But until he can get into a healthier relationship with himself, it's like, what am I supposed to do with you? And unless you're really asking for real help, it's like, what am I supposed to do with you? You know what I mean? So again, it's like, <clears throat> it is what it is. but. That's what I'm judging on. I'm only judging if like you're unhealthy, but you don't want to say it out loud. If you're saying I'm super unhealthy and I'm working on it and you are, I'm with you. If you say I'm healthy and I'm working on it and you aren't, then I'm annoyed with you. It's like complainers versus venters. I'm okay with you complain or venting. I don't want to hear you complain. I'm okay with you recognizing you have faults. I don't want to hear you make fake promises and over promising like I'm working on it. You're not working on it, dude. Just you're okay. I would rather you say I'm messed up and I'm not working on it than for you to say I'm messed up and I'm working on it, but you're not. Because again, it's a lie. I don't like liars. It's the kind of uh, dogmatism that I've been seeing. So in that sense, I would say the power of love <laughs> is, is, the, is the philosophy <laughs> you might apply to Brett because the right conversation you have in private is not about, hey, listen, you're you know the the experts you're talking to they seem credentialed but they're not actually as credentialed as, as they are illustrating they're not grounding their findings in actual meta-analyses and papers and so on mm -hmm. like making a strong case like what are you doing this is going to get a lot of people in trouble but instead just saying like being a friend in the dumbest of ways 
Hold on. I can't control it. Critical Papa? Who's that? Pepe? Brit, Bradley Martin, Destiny Sneak goes everywhere. And I'm like, ugh, I hate you, but not really. I'm just like exhausted. Sounds like you're exhausted with yourself. You know what I mean? Like, if you're exhausted with what you're consuming, you're exhausted with yourself for consuming it, right? Being like respectful, sending love their way, and just having a conversation outside of all of this. Outside, okay. like basically so showing that like. <sighs> Ooh, let me give you a spectrum I just came up with, okay? Um, the other day, I do unhealthy and unhealthy like a spectrum of working out, right? So when you work out, you start off as a beginner, then you're intermediate, then you're a pro, then you're like a master, right? So when you're having that relationship with being healthy, like you know when you're a beginner working out, you know when you're unhealthy. Then you know when you're intermediate, okay, and you know when you're a master and you know when you're a pro or you're pro and a master, right? Same with being healthy. Once you're in the green zone of good enough, then you're good to go and everything after that is whatever. Everything after that is whatever. But there is a moment in which you're before healthy. So you can be messy and working on it and be in like a healthier zone, like the beginning stages of healthy. So you're good to go. You're basically there. Now you just got to do the like the, the details, right? Okay. Brittany took that personally. Wait, took what personally? Everything is ourselves. So anytime you're upset with somebody else, you're upset with yourself. I fully believe that. Every time I'm upset with a content creator, I'm upset with myself for not radically accepting them for who they are. Because I am like, why are you like this? Which is me saying, I can't accept them for who they are. So that's what I mean by that statement, right? So when you're saying I'm unhealthy or healthy, you're saying I'm either in the green zone, the beginning stages where I'm like, okay, I'm working on it in a real way. Or you're saying, oh, I'm just starting off. So I still have the habits. I'm still going to relapse. I'm still going to do the thing. I'm still going to do the thing. If you're still dating toxic, you're toxic. If you're still dating shitty men or shitty women, you are shitty. You're not a bad person because you're a shitty person. I'm not putting that prescription on you. You might put that prescription on people, but I'm not putting that prescription on people. I think you can be a shitty person without being a bad person because shitty behavior is just like bad behavior, but it's not like bad person, right? Removing the emotional attachment to this debate, even though you are very emotionally attached because in the case of COVID. No, 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 no. Jessica says if I feel if you hate someone, then that means you still have feelings for that certain for that certain someone. But if you're indifferent towards that person, then there are no feelings. Does that make sense? I think, well, maybe you're saying what I'm saying. I think if you still have hate towards something, you have that hate within yourself. It has nothing to do with them. I think if you're still thinking about someone, you're, it's not even about them. It's about you. Let's say you break up with your toxic boyfriend and you still think about going back to him. That has nothing to do with him. That is a relationship you're having with yourself you are having that relationship with yourself. When you want to go back to someone, it's not them you're going back to. It's the version of you that's willing to be with them. That means you are still that person or you're willing to think about being that person again to some extent. So I think if you hate somebody, it's not that you have feelings for them. It's that you're the kind of person who's willing to have feelings for them. Does that make sense? That's how I look at it. COVID specifically, there's a very large number of lives at stake. But removing all of that and remembering that you have a friendship. Yeah, well, so the, I think these are highly non-analogous cases, right? So your, your conversation with Kanye misfired from my point of view. Conrad, you're wrong, though. You're wrong. It's like when I called Sneeko for being sexist during his street podcast. I just knew exactly who it was. And like every content creator tried saying he could do better, but like he can't. That's your opinion. You're wrong, though. You're wrong. Like Sneeko is doing better. And what does sexist mean? Right? How do you know he is objectively sexist? How do you know it's, if it, it, it's a grift, right? Everyone says Sneeko's grifting. Then if he's grifting, his sexism is also a grift. Is Sneeko being 100% honest with his content? Is he being 100% honest? Is he 100% honest? Then you could probably say he is sexist because his content is sexist. Right? In a, in a way, it is sexist. But if you think he's grifting and lying to his audience, then he isn't sexist. He's performing sexism to get money from the group of people that will give him money for shitting on women. Right? Does 
Does that make sense? So again, when people say someone is grifting or someone is lying to their audience, you've got to be careful because that means you're not, you don't know that you're not inside of his head. You're not, but it is, and I would argue Sneeko is sexist because he's willing to perpetuate sexist ideology without thinking about how it's impacting other people. And it probably coincides with some version of what he thinks about men versus women, right? So I would say Destiny is partly sexist. Sneeko's partly sexist. All these people are partly sexist, right? I never said he was grifting. Okay, so you don't have the grifting perspective. He was doing it before Tate. Well, Sneeko, Sneeko has always been a boy. And lots of men are sexist. That's what women have been saying. Men are sexist. So we're agreeing men are sexist, but what way are they sexist, right? And it's not all men, but most men are sexist. So if, of course, Sneeko will be, say it with me, sexist, but then it's in what way is he sexist? And what way are some men sexist, right? And what way are some men sexist? And that's the next question to ask ourselves because we see it in all communities. We see it in the D&D community. We see it in tabletop communities. We see it in cosplay. We see it in all these things. We see it in our sphere here. We see it in other spheres there. Everywhere we go, there's some sort of men think they're better than women, right? And so it is interesting to ask ourselves, is Sneeko that different than most men? Or is he actually just the loudest amongst them? And is he so immature, he gets pushed up to the top because he's good for clicks? And that's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. I want to know exactly, right? Like if you are radically accepting humans for what they are, if you literally think you're better than them, but if you're better than them, then you should be able to radically accept who they are. But you're not because none of us are. We're all just trying to radically accept at our own pace, but we are not any better because we are just as hateful or just as judgy or just as whatever. We are only more healthy or unhealthy, but we're not really better. You know what I mean? We're not really better, you know? For a very different reason. It was, it was, it has to do with Kanye. I mean, so Kanye, I don't, I don't know. I've never met Kanye. Uh, so obviously I don't know him. Um, but I think he's either obviously in the midst of a mental health crisis or he's a colossal asshole or, or both. both. I mean, there's actually, those aren't mutually exclusive. Both. So one of three possibilities, he's either mentally ill, he's an asshole, both. or he's, a, he's mentally ill and an asshole. Both. I think all three it, of those possibilities are possible for the both of us as well. No. Uh, no shut up, Lex. <laughs> No, I would argue none of those are are, are right. likely for uh, either of us. But no, um, possible. Uh, not not to no, Lex. Oh my God, no. Obviously not, bro. You can be. Obviously, Lex isn't suffering enough from any mental illness to actually have Kanye level energy. Okay, so Kanye is a combination of like mentally disturbed, mentally unwell, and just naturally an asshole, which you know, is a part of like his relationship probably with his mental health. And then Lex is obviously not exhibiting those like extremes. And so like Lex is just trying to be like neutral, but it's not working because then it doesn't make any sense. To say we don't have our moments, but. Right. So, so the reason not to talk to Kanye, so you, I, I think you should have had the conversation you had with him in private. That's great. And there's no, I've got no uh, criticism. Wait, Connor, you said like history podcast seemed to be designed to find calm old men and triggered women. I don't know. His old stuff was so good to me. But I, yeah, of course, it has a narrative. Every person has a narrative spin. And it feels like his content has just become more of that. Are you still watching his content? I haven't watched Sneeko in like months, like a year almost. I don't watch his content. Ever since he got kicked off YouTube, I don't watch Sneeko's content, right? Like, why would I watch it? It's not for me. Like, you know what I mean? Even when I see his content being viewed by other people, like, it's obviously for the demographic it's for. If you're not part of the demographic, don't watch it. But also, like, you know, it's just silly. It's stupid content. In 10 years, he's probably going to feel dumb he made it. Or at least he's going to feel like, ah, oh, yeah, I was really, like, growing at that point, right? We've all been there. Look at Logan. Look at Jackass. Look at, like, all of these shows I grew up watching. Everyone's made content that is cringe but is really popular. And most people want to go for what's popular. You know what I mean? It sometimes doesn't even reflect your beliefs. Have you guys seen Mario Lopez recently? Mario Lopez is like talking in his real accent and not the accent he performed throughout all of our lives as Slater and Mario Lopez. And everyone's like, you're Mexican? Like what? You have an accent? And he's just like looking at people. He has been literally a character for 30 years. 
for 30 years. And everyone believes him in white culture as this part of himself, but he's been showing more of his real self lately, code switching, you know what I mean? Back into normal. And people are like looking at him differently. Isn't that interesting? Like that's why I know in entertainment, most people are putting on a front and most people are more like their person, right? But even Mario Lopez is like, he's stopping all the code switching stuff. So it's one of those things, right? Brit Sneeko's on the Bradley Martin crew now and he keeps jumping from community. So I feel like I can't engage in content I like without running into him. And I guess that's why I'm frustrated. Sure. I feel that way sometimes with Destiny. Like people are always like, why do you keep talking about him? He's in every one I watch. Every time I go to a different podcast, he's there. But like, I don't care. They're all content creators. I look at him like a guy who's running a business online. You know what I mean? So like, I don't care if Destiny's there. I don't care if Sneeko's there, but I also don't have the issue you have with them. I don't care. I just look at them as like capitalists. They're just trying to make money. Like, what does it matter? But I think you have a problem with that probably. But I understand the frustration because it could look like, from my perspective, it looks like I'm just like following Destiny everywhere, but he's just on all the podcasts I watch. And then from your perspective, it looks like you're trying to like follow Sneeko, but, or hate watch Sneeko, but you can't stand it. Yeah, it's what it is. Like, I get it. I get that. But at the end of the day, they're capitalists trying to make money. Like, that's their goal. So, of course, they're trying to get, they're going to become mainstream. They want to be known. They want as many eyes on them as possible, right? So it is what it is. Maybe you need to start reading books or playing games or getting off YouTube in general. And YouTube is a big sphere. And we're going to watch Bradley Martin later today. So, you know. <sighs> I love drugs, Brittany. I mean, don't we all? Jessica's stalking me, Brittany. I doubt it. I doubt it. Of what you said, had it been in private. In public, I just thought you're not doing him a favor. If, if he's mentally ill, right? If he's in the middle of a, a, a manic episode or, or, you know, I'm not a clinician, but I've, you know, I've heard it said of him that he is bipolar. Um, you're not doing him a favor sticking a mic in front of him and letting him go off on the Jews or anything else, right? Um, True. We know what he thought about the Jews. We know that there's not much illumination going to that's going to come from him on that topic. And if it is a symptom of his mental illness that he thinks these things, well, then it's you're not doing him a favor making that even more public. Sure. Um, sure. If he's just an was Lex uh, doing an interview with Kanye and Money Grab? I would say partially yes. I would say 70% of Lex's motivation for getting Kanye on the podcast was a money grab and or a an investment in good good business. And 30% was because he cares about Kanye's a consciousness. What do you guys think? Ooh, seven with the super chat. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for your super chats and buying the merch. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> Brittany Simon had one of the best videos of all time. Please continue. Thank you. Very funny. Um, what do you guys think? I think Lex having Kanye on having any guest on is always 70% for the business, which is good. That's probably smart. I don't fault him for that. But I do think Lex has a real desire to help people and has a connection with people. And so I think that he, he does, he does have some version of him that's interested in people the way I'm interested in people, the way like we are curious, but we're still running a business. So. Asshole. And he's just an anti-Semite in you know, an ordinary, you know, garden variety anti-Semite, well then there's also not much to say unless you're really going <sighs> to dig in and kick the shit of, out of him in public. And I'm, I'm saying you can do that with love. I mean, that, that's the other thing here is that I don't agree that compassion and love always have this patient, uh, embracing, acquiescent face, right? Yeah, I, I know, because Sam Harris is all about like... Sam Harris is so... Sam Harris is very, he's not like a mother. He's not going to like mother you through your traumas. He's going to like just kill you, right? I don't mean that literally, oh my God. But the way he speaks about Muslims, the way he speaks about like religious people, which I understand, yes, the world would be better without the religious, obviously, or people who believed in religion. The world would be better without people who believed in religion. I believe that. But it wouldn't be that much better because humans would replace religion with something else and they know it. But um, I do think that um, Sam Harris is probably not the person 
just like most of you are not the people to be compassionate towards Sneeko, like I have a better chance at being longevity compat. I'm still rooting for Sneeko. You have to understand that I'm on a 10 year commitment to his trajectory. I think in 10 years, Sneeko will be a very interesting person and he'll be in his mid thirties. So he'll be my age, right? Sneeko still has like 10 years to catch up to me. So he'll be there or however long it is, you know, I think he's a little older than that, but I'm I'm like a 10 years invested in my mid 40s to my 50s. I'm going to hope Sneeko has had a great introspective journey more so than the one he's on because like the one he's on is too stagnant, but he could live here forever and be pretty happy, I guess. OK, I think Sam Harris is less interested in following someone along their journey, um, which is why he doesn't feel any interest in Kanye. Like, I'm not sure if Kanye is objectively an anti-Semite or if he's performatively one. He obviously has problems with the Jews. He believes in the conspiracy theories. Like he obviously buys into the conspiracy theories. Um, and to be fair, that could be his mental illness. That could be his mania. That could be his a lot of things. Or you could watch mainstream news and watch them also push this narrative. Not the mainstream news that's like rooting for Israel, but the mainstream news that is actually um, used to be mainstream, but is now quote unquote independent talking about Israel or Jews in a particular way. You could see how easy it is for Sam Harris to believe all Muslims are probably crazy. Why wouldn't people believe all Jews are crazy? Like the audacity of people to literally spread information that the Muslims are scary, but God forbid somebody says the Jews are scary. You know what I mean? Like, don't you see we're all doing it to each other? And yes, to some extent, cultural differences and values will differ and then there will be wars, which is normal. But it doesn't need to be a conspiracy theory that groups of people think differently and might harm you because you're not like them. As an LGBT person, I would know. And at the end of the day, this like assumption we have that our group is truly the best group is only probably subjectively true. And it's reasonable for you to have it. But then why don't you think the other group would have the same thought? If you think you're the best, if you think your culture is better, if you think you are literally superior to somebody else, why do you think someone isn't having that lived experience on the other side of the planet in a different bubble? And then you look at them like they're insane. How could they think this? You think this. You think this, sir. Yeah, they, they don't always feel good to the recipient, right? There is a sword of wisdom that you can wield compassionately in moments like that where someone's full of shit and you just make it absolutely clear to them and to your audience that they're full of shit. And it's That's what people wanted me to do with Sneeko. And so I started to do it much more, even though I thought I was shitting on Sneeko enough. That's what people wanted. They're like, pretty be meaner to Sneeko. But I was pretty mean to him. I was pretty mean to Sneeko. Like, I don't understand. Did nobody watch my live shows, me shitting on Sneeko for four hours at a time, him and Pearl? Like, I was really mean to Sneeko. And then um, people were like, just because he's your friend doesn't mean you can't hold him accountable. Okay, if you want me to do it more, I will. And then once he did, within my values, harm women in a way that I was like, I can't support you in this. I took down our podcast. But that wasn't because the world wanted me to. That was because I had evidence that he had been hurting people personally in a way that I couldn't vibe with. I really don't care about their content as much. I care about what they're actually doing directly to people because, like, these people are often grifters, so it doesn't matter too much to me. Um, but same thing. Like, I haven't, I have problems with Destiny, and I've been taking down our collabs because I don't think he's as, he's bad enough in the same way. You know what I mean? But he's not any better than like a fresher fit in some ways. It's just different. It's like different bubbles. It's like different ways to look at it. You know what I mean? Plus, Sneeko's, um, the women Sneeko's been bad to are upset with him and they're holding him more accountable. The women, like who are more upset with somebody else, like they're not holding him to the same standard. So like, it's one of those complicated things. So I understand Sam Harris's perspective on this. It was just like, at what point do we make it clear to people we don't agree? So I'm making myself more clear. That's, have you noticed the change? I am making myself more clear with my stances, but people are upset because they didn't want me to apply it to their favorites. And I'm like, who did you think it was going to apply to? Do you want me to be open and lovely to everyone I talk to? Or do you want me to start putting down my names? Do you want me to start like literally saying like, yeah, you're a shitty person. That's everybody. Rarely do I look at a person and not think like, hey, you're being pretty shitty to people, especially on the internet. A lot of us are shitty to people. It's very hard to be a content creator that isn't actively shitty to people because most of the ways you get ahead in drama YouTube is to be shitty to people because that's what brings in the views. 
That's why I blocked the Thorps because like their shittiness level is too dysfunctional. I can't engage. It's why I blocked Lav. It's why I blocked Mr. Girl because there's just a certain level of shittiness I can't handle. I don't want to engage with it, right? Kay says, I think people want you to be mean to the people they don't like, not mean about them since that's the type of human interaction they're familiar with and expect. Fair, but no. And that's the problem is everyone wants you to play a game that makes them feel better. So Sam Harris right now is asking Lex to play a game that makes him feel better. Be meaner to Kanye, right? Be meaner to Kanye so I so I feel comfortable listening to your podcast, Lex. And Lex is like, well, I want to be loving. And it's like, well, I don't want you to be loving in that way. I want you to be loving in the way that I'm loving. There's no, there's no hatred being communicated. In fact, you could just it's like, listen, I'm going to do everyone a favor right now and, you know, just take your foot out of your mouth and and um and the truth is you know I wouldn't I just wouldn't have aired the conversation like I just don't think it was a document that had to get out there right I I, I get that but many why not? this is not a signal you're likely to get from your audience right like I get that many people in your audience thought oh my god that's awesome you you're talking to Kanye and you're doing it in Lex style where it's just love and you're not treating him like a pariah and you know you, you're you're holding this tension between he's this creative genius who is work we love, and yet he's having this moment that's so painful. And you know, what a tightrope walk! And uh, I get that maybe ninety percent of your audience saw it that way. They're still wrong, and I and, and I, I still think that was not, on balance not a good thing to put out into the world. You don't think it opens up the mind and heart of people that listen to that? Just have it, it, it seeing if a person. It does. It's it's let if it's opening up in the wrong direction where just gale force nonsense is coming in, right? I, I think we should have an open mind and an open heart, but there's some clear things here that that we have to keep in view. One is uh, the mental illness component is its own thing. Yeah. I don't pretend to understand what's going on with him. So, But insofar as that's the reason he's saying what he's saying, do not put this guy on camera and let no. But I had see to, sorry on that point real quick. I had a bunch of conversation with him offline, and I didn't get a sense of mental illness. That's why I, right. I chose to sit down. Okay. And I didn't get it. I mean, mental illness is such a. Um, Lex is being ignorant. I don't believe him here. But when he, he shows up in a gimp hood on Alex Jones's podcast, I mean, is, is that either that's more you know. Either it's performative. So here's the deal. Okay. That's a great question, right? Because I think that's actually to Destiny's credit, to Steven's credit, I think that's why he stopped engaging with the Thorps because after the Anna stuff, I think he did try to fix sort of exploiting mentally ill people on his streams, which is difficult since like everyone's a mentally ill person on the spectrum probably, but probably not like different kinds of just, I would say more dysfunctional than mentally ill, which is like overlap. But do like I think I I liked I think that's what I saw. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought well of Steven when he decided not to engage with the Thorps on his channel, and I thought, oh, that's a good sign. You know, it's not, you know, it's a good sign. Um, and same, like I don't engage with the Thorps when I'm asked to be on a panel and the Thorps are there, I won't do it. I just won't engage with that level of dysfunction. Would I talk to Kanye West? I think I would talk to him about mm, maybe mental health, but I I couldn't talk to him if I thought he was very mentally unwell. Um, I don't want to exploit people that way. I'm open to doing, um, I need them to be able to consent, which is the problem, right? Like consent is really big, but then it comes into play, like who gets to consent to being on stream, who gets to consent to, um, being heard, who gets to consent to being seen. And I'm saying that the mentally ill deserve to be seen and they deserve to be heard, and so I kind of love that. Like I want access because I don't want the world to judge who's mentally competent enough to be seen. But as individuals, I think it's fair for us to consider it. So I think it's fair for Lex to consider that Kanye might have been capable of having that conversation. I don't know if I would have made the same decision, but I can't fault him for thinking he's capable enough if he has that type of relationship with mental health. Because again, I don't want the government or even YouTube coming in and deciding who's mentally competent enough to make content. I think that's really unfair and it allow it doesn't allow a lot of people to tell their story. And I think a lot of people deserve to tell their story, especially when they're sick, because like that's a real story to be told. So I'm not sure. You know what I mean? I'm not sure about this. I think Sam Harris is more of an activist than I am. I'm not an activist anymore. So he's from an activist perspective thinking, don't show this man on stream. And from my perspective, I'm like, show the human condition. And I think Lex is probably on that page too, where he's like, show the human condition. So I'm going to assume 
in good faith that Lex is actually more interested in showing the human condition, sick, unwell, healthy, perfect, whatever that means. Genius performance in his world or it's he, he's I unraveling further? I wouldn't put that under mental illness. I We have to, I think there's another conversation to be had about how we treat artists. Right. Because they're- He doesn't, uh, maybe. They're weirdos. They're very- Yeah, but that doesn't give them the right to cause more harm. So harm reduction, like just because you're an artist, you know, I know Marilyn Manson had this same relationship with modern television when I was growing up where he would have to defend his right to exist as an artist. Eminem had to do the same thing. Oh my gosh, I swear to God, I got cat hair on my face. Eminem had to do the same thing. And I wanted Eminem to exist even with all his lyrics about Kim and about these things. And the dilemma is like, when are you an artist and a storyteller? And when are you causing like immense harm? And I think that's a really important question for us to answer. And I think it's really, really hard to know. So better to side on the cash and of, or the side of freedom than not. Honestly, I think it's better for society to be more free and destructive than um, restrictive and safe. So I'm on the side of chaos more than the side of restriction. Because again, every time you restrict somebody, you're restricting like a well-intentioned good person. So my dilemma is that if you restrict Kanye, do you also have to restrict everyone with borderline who's on the internet? Are you going to restrict people being able to talk about their splitting episodes? Are you going to reject everyone being able to talk about themselves? Or what about that inbred family that has like obviously like mentally disabled people on camera? Are they not allowed to tell their story because it's disturbing? They're not all the way there. Can they consent? I am always going to choose chaos and freedom over safety and order. That's just that's just the kind of I think that's always the best way to go personally. I mean, we, you know, taking, <laughs> taking words from Kanye as if he, he's like Christopher Hitchens or something like that, like very eloquent, researched, <clears throat> you know, written many books on history, on politics and geopolitics, on psychology. Kanye didn't do any of that. He's an artist just spouting off. And so there's a different style of conversation and a um, different way to treat the words that are coming so, out of his let's mouth. Let's leave the mental illness aside. So if, if, if we're going to say that there's no reason to think he's mentally ill, and this is just him being creative and brilliant and opinionated, well, then that falls into the asshole bucket for me. It's like, then then he's someone, and honestly, the most offensive thing about him in that interview, from my point of view, is not the anti-Semitism, which you know, we can talk about, because I think there, there are problems just letting him uh, uh, spread those memes as well. But the most offensive thing is just how delusionally egocentric he is or was coming off in that interview and, and in others. Like he, he has an estimate. Okay, here's the Lex test. Lex was praised for how he handled that interview because he allowed Kanye to say his stuff and he knew not to step on Kanye's toes the way every other person does. The fact that you have to walk on eggshells around Kanye West proves he's too egotistical or mentally ill, or an asshole to engage with. If I have to walk on eggshells around your feelings, I don't want to engage with you. If I have to literally be so afraid you're going to walk out of an interview if I say the wrong thing, like you're not worthy of engaging with in Britney's opinion from my standard, right? I don't want to talk to people that are like, oh, I don't want Kanye to leave my podcast. Like, And that's what Lex was doing. Lex was praised for handling Kanye very well. Why? Because he's a diva. Even being too much of a diva, it's not worth it. I'm not interested in talking to you. And so I think that's how I would look at it. It doesn't matter why the reason is, uh, though that's interesting. What matters is that it had to have happened in the first place. Lex had to step on eggshells and, and literally be very cautious and play a game with Kanye as to not upset him. So regardless of why that's happening, the fact that it had to happen is is the problem in my opinion. What do you guys think about that? That is the problem in my opinion. Estimation of himself as this omnibus genius to, to, to rival, not only to rival Shakespeare, to exceed Shakespeare, right? I mean, it's like he's, he is the greatest mind that has ever walked among us. And he's ex more or less explicit on that point. And yet he manages to talk for hours without saying anything actually interesting or insightful or, or factually illuminating, right? So it's- Well, I think your Sam is um, putting, uh, Sam has to understand like, then it's not for you to some extent. 
Like for to some extent, it's not for you then because the people that wanted to hear it might find it interesting. But that's the dilemma too is like when you're listening to someone, you're like, why are you talking to this person? This is so boring. That's you. That has nothing to do with the audience as a whole. You're not making some grand objective statement. So when people make that statement, it's like, why are you making that statement? And Sam is saying, I'm uncomfortable. I don't like it. Change because of me. Complete delusion of a very Trumpian sort. You know, it's like it's like you know when Trump says he's a genius who understands everything, and like, but nobody takes him seriously. And one wonders whether Trump takes himself seriously. Kanye seems to believe he, he Trump too. I think Trump is very sensitive. He would walk off the show. I think Trump would also be very hard for me to talk to. Because I feel like I'd have to walk around eggshells around his feelings. I feel like he's very sensitive. He seems to believe his own press. He actually thinks he's, he's, <laughs> you know, uh, just a colossus. And um, he may be a great musician. You know, I'm not, you know. I, I've... By the way, I also think Sam Harris also thinks he is very important. One of the reasons I fell off Sam Harris is he also gives me the impression that he believes the way the young atheists talk about him, that he is like a horseman, that he is like an amazing mind and all these things. Um, it's like off-putting to me because it shows like a lack of introspection to some degree or humility. Um, but I don't think Sam Harris is what I would call like a very humble person. But to be fair, like, <laughs> you know, neither am I really. But like, we're, you know, our personalities almost don't let us be, even though internally – I know there's like a sense of humility in how I think about the world. I don't know if Sam actually thinks about the world in a humility way. I would be very interested. Maybe I should read one of his recent books or something if he has a recent one. I'm not sure. But the way he talks about people just makes me think like, where's the humility, my bro? You know what I mean? I'm not sure. <clears throat> Wait, cap on what? Sam knows Socrates through come on. So? 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 Sam, look at him right now. He's expressing ego right now. Like Sam is doing it right now. Where is his humility? You know what I mean? Like, where is his understanding of Kanye? Where is his true understanding? See, he doesn't understand him. And because he doesn't understand them, he wants to tell Lex, I think it was very bad to post that podcast. Whose opinion is it to post the podcast? You know? Oh, this is me. It's certainly not my wheelhouse to compare him to any other musicians, but... Um... One thing that's patently obvious in, in from your conversation is he's not who he thinks he is intellectually or ethically or in any other relevant way. And so when you couple that to the anti-Semitism he was spreading, which I, was genuinely noxious and ill-considered and um, has r potential knock-on effects in the black community. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's an ambient level of anti-Semitism in the black community that is worth worrying about and talking about anyway. There's a bunch of guys, you know, playing the knockout game. Question, is there enough anti-Palestinian energy in the Israeli community to be worried about it? Is there any anti, I know we're all Arabs, but any, an, like, is there a specific maybe energy that some Israelis have against Arabs and Palestinians that maybe we should talk about too? Does that maybe get to talk? No? Okay, cool, whatever. Came in Brooklyn just punching Orthodox Jews in the face. And I think letting Kanye air his anti-Semitism that publicly only raises the, the likelihood of that rather than diminishes it. I don't know. So let me say just a couple of things. So one, my belief at the time was it doesn't, it decreases it. Showing right. empathy while pushing back decreases the likelihood of that. It does, might it might on the surface look like it's increasing it, but that's simply because the anti-Semitism or the hatred in general is brought to the surface and then people right. talk uh, talk about it. But I should also say that you're one of the only people that wrote to me privately criticizing me. Oh. And um, like out of the people I really respect and admire, and that was really valuable that like, I had to, it painful because I had to think through it for a while. Yeah. I'm still, it still haunts me because the other kind of criticism I got a lot of people basically said things towards me uh, based on who I am that they hate me. Just, you, just you mean anti-Semitic things or yeah, that you anti-Semitic things? I just hate the word anti-Semitic. It's a, uh, it's like racist. Well, but here's the reality. Ugh! Why are people such talking points? Yes, racist. Is a talking point. It's like a it's like a gotcha. It's like a zing. 
yes, anti-Semitism can be the same thing, but these things mean something. And if we're being very serious about language, there's absolutely anti-Semitism in the world. There's absolutely anti-Arab rhetoric in the world. There's absolutely Zionism or Zionism, <laughs> xenophobia in the world. There's absolutely homophobia in the world. There's absolutely transphobia in the world. I hate when people start like um, conservatives will be like, why are you calling me transphobic? I'm not transphobic. I just think trans people shouldn't exist and shouldn't be around children and shouldn't have jobs and should all die. And I'm like, um, hello? Like, what are you talking about? Like, what are we talking about here? And then when I see, like, even, like, look, I see it from everybody. Every group of people got hate in their hearts. We need to free ourselves from the hate in our hearts, bros. Okay? That is ultimately why every type of demographic has it. You can find black racists, whatever you want to call as racist, right? You can find black people who hate Israel, right? You can find Palestinians that hate Israel. You can find Israel that hates Palestine. You can hate this person who finds... You can find every kind of person who hates every kind of person. Because within each bubble... There's always a demographic who hates other people and thinks they're like bad, evil, whatever. I get called racist. You know who you are because I like have like Assyrian pride or I think like Arab pride is fine or I think like people having pride around the world is different than white pride. Some people feel like it is racist to not understand why white pride is the same as every other pride, but it's not. White pride in America is racist pride because like white pride only exists within the racist confines of like white supremacy. So like I've never seen white pride being celebrated in the United States in any of the bubbles, I could be wrong, that doesn't correlate with the subjugation or um, oppression of another group, right? Versus other groups when they're celebrating who they are, they're usually uplifting themselves and it's not usually at the expense of somebody else but white pride specifically is usually at the expense of somebody else. So again, you can be a white person in Ireland or a white person in Croatia, if that's what you want to call white. And you can absolutely, like you can absolutely um, say that that is different than white pride. And look, you can have that opinion. Lots of people do. And I'm not saying you're wrong for having that opinion. I just think it is not factual when you're talking about these groups of people. It's just not the same experience like you're explaining an experience that could look the same but the nuance is actually showing it's not the same you know what I mean so again if white people in the United States wants to reform what white pride means and you guys want to agree that white pride in America means something that isn't racist you have to start doing that you have to start becoming activists you have to start rebranding you have to kick out all the racists you have to say we're not going to do that anymore but then what are you what are you in love with you're in love with being a skin color, not an ethnicity with a background and a culture. That's why it's different. And I feel like I'm explaining Tumblr 101 to people, okay? But literally, white pride isn't usually rooted in where you've come from. It's the color of your skin. Black pride in the United States, because a lot of them are descendants of slaves who were taken from places they have no connection to, have black pride in relation to that oppression, which is different than the oppression doled out by white pride. Exactly. Like, okay, again, Lex can hate the word anti-Semitism, but it means something. There are absolutely people that want to kill Jewish people because they're Jewish. And there are absolutely Jewish people that hate Palestinians because they're Palestinian. And there are absolutely Christians who want to kill all the gays. And there are absolutely Muslims who want to kill all the whites. And there's absolutely blacks who want to kill all the... Everybody wants to kill somebody. And I'm saying it comes from the hatred in our hearts and the fear, the fear, because the fear is the root of all evil. Fear is the root of all evil. Because we're having a certain relationship with what we're afraid something means. With what we're afraid something means. Well, if gay people can get married, what does that say about my marriage? What does that say about my marriage? Oh my gosh, if my blacks, uh, bl if a black woman chooses a white man, what does that say about black men? Oh my God, if a black man chooses a white woman, what does that say about black women? If you choose this, what does it say? Everyone is so afraid that something means something. And it can. If you watch Fresh and Fit, they will say, we don't date black women. They are saying something about black women. They are making an argument that black women are less worthy of love, which is not true. And that is rooted in, in uh, internalized racism, right? Like Fresh and Fit suffer from internalized racism. They are black. They are obviously black. And they have the audacity to say black women aren't worthy of love. Okay. Sure. And that's internalized racism, kids. That's what it is. So you can say, I don't like this word racism, but girl, what else am I supposed to call that? Self-hatred? That's a good one. But what is racism? It's hatred. It's fear and hatred mixed together. Boom. Racism.
So I, I'm someone, so I'm Jewish, you know, although obviously not religious. Um, I have never taken, you know, I've, t I've been a student of the Holocaust, obviously. I, I know a lot about that, and, and there's reason to, to be a student of the Holocaust. Uh, but in my lifetime and in my experience, I have never taken anti-Semitism very seriously. I have not worried about it. I have not um, made a thing of it. I've done exactly one podcast. I hear that's really common for modern Jews not to think about it that much until recently. Cast on it. I you know, had Barry Weiss on my podcast um, when her book came out. Uh Ooh, that's a good point, Izzy. I think the main fresh and fit dude, Myron, is the half Arab. So I'm not surprised about the anti-blackness, to be honest. That's true. That is true. See? See? That is true. Yeah, that is true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it really is a thing, and it's uh, it's something we have to keep an eye on societally because it, it it's... So if somebody is proud to be Irish in the culture but not better than in someone, is that racist? I'm not Irish just asking, or is that white pride? No, that's Irish pride. So that's okay. Because you're having pride in a culture with food and language and expectations... That's different, right? So Irish pride is fine, right? You know, but that wouldn't be considered white pride. White pride is a specific bubble. It means a specific thing in the States. I don't know what white pride means outside of America, but in America, white pride means something specific. So my bestie is like Irish descent and she would never celebrate white pride because white pride is a racist thing. She would celebrate Irish pride if she celebrated anything like that. She wouldn't literally celebrate I, uh, I white pride, white pride is a specific bubble. So great question. Great clarifying question. So it's a unique kind of hatred, right? It's a, it's a, it's unique in that it seems it's, it's knit together with, it's not just ordinary racism. It's, it, it's knit together with lots of conspiracy theories that never seem to die out. Um, it's, it can by turns equally animate the left and the right politically. I mean, what's so perverse about anti-Semitism, like look in the American context. When I was younger, the right was all about anti-Semitism and now the progressives are all about anti-Semitism and now it's back to the right again. It like wish-washed. It wish-washed. That's why I say none of you actually have values. No one in the politics world actually has values. You don't. You don't have values. You have fears. I'm afraid of being on the wrong side of history. I'm afraid of not fighting for the victim. I'm afraid of not even knowing. The fact that people are calling Israelis the new Nazis, you are so all brain dead. You are so brain dead and you deserve the world you have around you. You're so brain dead. To call Israel the new Nazis, like you're brain dead. But at the same time, I get it because you literally don't have values. You don't even know what words mean. And I get it because we all change what words mean in different bubbles. But it's so brain dead to call Israel like Nazis, like it's just brain dead in the same way that it's brain dead to call anyone who isn't the right enough amount of white a Nazi. Like it makes no sense, right? You're brain dead. But at the same time, like I can't blame you because like we're so uneducated in the world. Like what does it mean? And we're not even agreeing on what words mean anymore. So you're all brain dead, brain dead. Like, oh, if I was around during the Holocaust, I would definitely be on the side of the victim and the the, the the Nazis this time around are the Jews. And I'm like, do you remember who died in the Holocaust? Do you remember who they were? Can you remember? It's really easy. Can you remember? And again, like maybe we're like forgetting exactly how the Holocaust happened, but it was a little different than what's happening right now in the conflict. But it feels the same because it almost looks the same because what is happening is very unethical. Israel is doing a horrible thing to Palestine right now. Israel is doing a horrible thing to Palestine right now. That is my personal belief. They are doing a horrible thing to Palestine right now. And I disagree with this like decision that they have made and it is killing lots of innocent people. But it is not the same thing as what the Nazis did to the Jews during the Holocaust or what they did to the trans or the gays. It is not the same thing. Okay? It is not the same thing. Not everything is a Nazi. Okay? It's not the same thing. It's totally fucking different. It's totally different. Hitler's goals politically were very different than Israel's, unless you believe in conspiracy theories. Then this group of 14 million people you think is making like mass moves playing 4D chess, which maybe they are, or maybe humans are just being humans, you know? With the far right, you know, with white supremacists, Jews aren't considered white, so they, they hate us in the, in the same spirit in which they hate black people or, or brown people or anyone who's not white. 
But on the left, Jews are considered extra white. I mean, we're, we're, we're the extra beneficiaries of white privilege, right? And in the black community, that is often the case. He's explaining bubbles very well. I joked with one of my Israeli friends. I was like, wait, wait, wait. So if the white nationalists, like who, who, what side are they on? Palestinians or Israel's? Well, obviously they're anti-Palestine. And then once they are, they get rid of Palestine, the white nationalists will get rid of the Jews. The white nationalists hate everybody. So this idea that progressives see Jews as whites, have to remember that white nationalists aren't pro-Israel or pro-Jews. Again, Jews are Arabs. Do we need a reminder that we're all Arabs? Like all of us, Assyrians, Palestinians, Jews. What do you think we're all doing there? And again, I know you say like a lot of Israels came from, or a lot of Israelis came from Europe and they imported them in. I understand your thinking. But just a reminder that if Jewish was an Arab, he was an Arab Jew. If Jesus was an Arab, did I say Jewish? If Jewish was an Arab? If Jesus was an Arab, which everyone always loves to say on Twitter, then he was an Arab Jew. Okay, so be very careful who you're claiming to not be kin with. Do I need to remind you guys that we're all the same people or no? Are you also a little racist and so you don't want them there or you don't want to be together? And look, again, politically, Israel's doing a very bad thing. Israel's making the mistake and I don't think they're justified in their political word here, genocide of Palestine. That's a political word, by the way, because genocide means something specific. OK, but again, there's a there's a lot here to understand. But I don't want to hear it, OK? the case right we're, we're a minority that has thrived and so and, and, it, and it seems to stand as a counterpoint to all of the problems of of other that other minorities suffer in particular you know african americans in the american context african americans um, what are we in 1998 bro they're called people of color now i'm just kidding i don't know what everyone black i think we're just calling people black now are we saying african americans anymore i don't think that's what we're saying anymore my bubble my bubble doesn't say african american anymore and yeah, Asians are now getting a little bit of this, you know. Asian represent? <laughs> like the, the, the model minority uh, uh, issue. But Jews have had this going on for centuries and, and millennia, and it never seems to go away. And it's, again, this is something that I've never focused on, but th this has been at a slow boil for as long as we've been alive. And... There's no guarantee it can't suddenly become much, much uglier than we have any reason to, to expect it to become, even in, in our society. And so um, there's, a, there's kind of a special... Look, look, Brittany, stop telling the truth. They'll burn the witch or cancel you. Please cease. Listen to me. So many people have told me not to talk too much about the conflict because like they're going to cancel me and blah, blah, blah. I've heard people have the worst takes on this conflict. And again, I have no wisdom to share with you except like hate is in our hearts and it shows in our how we use our weapons. Hate is in our hearts and it shows in how we use our weapons. Hate is in our hearts and it shows in how we use our weapons. I'm sick of the political justification of murdering innocent people because, well, that's just war. Those are just casualties. That's just how life is. And it's wrong. And if we think we're more introspective, if we think we are wiser than this, I expect better. But if you would like to openly admit you're all a bunch of men throwing your weapons around at the expense of civilians, and if you would like to admit you're stupid, then I agree with you. War is necessary because people are stupid. But if you think you're introspective and you think you're better, then you should not be hitting civilians the way you're hitting civilians, bros. OK, that's not what we should be doing. If you say you're better, you're morally superior, you're the way the world should be. Oh, look, the Middle East. Should, like, yes, I agree. I believe in progressive values. I believe in LGBT rights. I would love a world without religion. That would be great. But at the same time, I don't want to slaughter the religious, you freaks. I don't want to slaughter people. Just, even if they are anti-LGBT, I don't want to slaughter them. So all those people like what is it called? Pinkwashing. The issue, yes, I understand from a political perspective, if I had to survive, you would go with the more progressive people who would down the line, like bring interest to your group. But ultimately, I am also anti-violence. I am anti-violence. I do not want to literally kill people that are anti-LGBT, and I don't want to kill the religious. And so the justification of saying, well, Palestine gets what it gets because it's like so um, behind the times. Uh, hello? Hi. I think we've lost the plot. I think we've lost the plot. Hate is in our hearts, and it is clear in how we use our weapons. A concern at moments like that where you have an immensely influential person in a community 
who already has a checkered history with respect to their own beliefs about the Jews and the conspiracies and all the rest. Uh, and he's just messaging, uh, you know, not especially fully opposed by you and anyone else who's, who's given him a, a, the microphone at that moment to the world. And Kanye is not interested in being wrong. That's why it's frustrating. That's why it's frustrating talking to a Trump or a Kanye, somebody who's not willing to be wrong in any capacity. He doesn't want to face the shame of himself. Why would introspection lead to your preferred outcome? I think the more introspective you are, the less violent you are, and the less more the more likely you are to admit why you're doing something. Right? I think the more introspective you are, the less violent you are, and the more you realize like I am you and you are me. None of us decided how we were going to come into this world. No one chose our bodies. We didn't choose our skin color. We could have been Palestinian. We could have been Israeli. We could have been each other. So the fact that we're so eager to hurt each other, so justified in our anger, and I get it, bros. The fact that we're so ready to just murder people because we feel justified, remember that you could have been on that other side. You could have been that Palestinian. You could have been that Israeli. And there is something to that that I don't think you will understand without introspection. How did I get here? How did I learn to justify this violence? How did I learn to make, how did I learn to justify sexism or misogyny? How did I learn to justify homophobia or transphobia? How did I learn to justify the subjugation of a whole other group? How, who taught it to me? And did I come from my nature? Both. Did you watch my recent panel? Are the humans inherently good or evil? Great panel, great guests, great panel. Okay. But I'm serious. Like, I'm not asking for perfection. I'm asking for self-awareness. Are we self-aware enough to admit, like, we were wrong to go to Iraq the way we did? A lot of conservatives are now openly admitting that. They're openly admitting we were wrong to go to Iraq for so long, and it was obviously for oil. And again, if it's for oil, say that. Say it with your chest. Say, I'm going to burn all these civilians to the ground for their oil. So at least we know why we're being pieces of shit. But they can't because they can't sell the war to the American people that way. Just like they can't sell the Israeli and Palestinian conflict to you without making it clear it's worth killing the other side. And both people are doing it because I'm getting news feeds from everybody. And the videos I'm seeing are disgusting from everybody. It's all violence and it's all hate. But obviously somebody has more weapons in this case and somebody has more power. And the person with more power needs to be held a little bit more responsible. They're allowed to defend themselves. But defending yourself doesn't look, in my opinion, the way that it's done, the way that it's being done. In my stupid opinion, in my unwise, uneducated opinion, human to human, I don't see the justification for this. I don't see the justification for this. I understand defending yourself. What is this? If this is defending yourself, what is, what is just outright murdering people? If this is self-defense, what is the difference between this and just outright murdering people? civilians. What is the difference? Maybe I'm just stupid. Maybe I'm an idiot. I don't know. But um, ma'am, thank you, Brianna, for the super chat. Preach. I'm trying here. Look, I am an unwise person, but I just, I don't see the justification. I, I don't see it. I don't see it. I just don't. I don't see it. So that, that, you know, made my spidey sense tingle. Yeah, it's complicated. It's, the stakes are very high. And I, as somebody that's been obviously family and also reading a lot about World War II yeah. and just this whole period, it was a very difficult conversation. But I, I, I believe in the power, especially uh, given who I am of um, not always, but sometimes often turning the other cheek. Oh, yeah. And again, things change when when they're for public consumption. You know, when you're, it's like, it's like I mean, the, the cut for me that, you know, has just the use case I keep stumbling upon is the, the kinds of things that I will say on a podcast like this, or if I'm giving a public lecture versus the kinds of things I will say at dinner with strangers or with mm. friends. Like, like if you're in an elevator, like if I'm in an elevator with strangers, I do not feel, and I hear someone say something stupid, I don't feel a, a, a an intellectual responsibility to turn around in a, in a in a in the con, in the confines of that space with them and say listen that thing you just said about x y or z is completely false and here's why right but if somebody says it in front of me uh, on some public dais where I'm actually talking about ideas 
that's when you know he feels uh, responsible. there's a different responsibility that comes online. I don't always feel responsible. So he feels responsible. I don't always feel responsible. And that's the difference is like, I don't always feel that responsibility. And I don't think it is accurate to say that you should always feel it. But it's Sam obviously feels that responsibility. The question is how you say it, how you say it. Or even whether you say anything in, in those. I mean, there, there are moments, there, there, there are definitely moments to privilege civility or just to pick your battles. I mean, some, sometimes it's just not worth it to get into it with somebody out out in, in real yeah. life. I just believe in the power of empathy, both in the, mm -hmm. in the elevator mm -hmm. and when a bunch of people are listening. That yeah. when they see you willing to consider the, another human being's perspective. I, yeah. It just gives more power to your... The dilemma you, is like to understand Kanye's perspective, first Kanye would also have to understand it. And that's the dilemma. I don't think Kanye really understands his own perspective and a way to convey it to others in a way that is very clear. I think some people listen to him and they take him in really, really good faith. But um, because he causes so much harm, I can't take him in super, super, super good faith to know himself because he's confusing when he explains it in a way that is reasonable. And so I think that's the struggle Sam is probably happening, uh, having, which is the problem that I have with Kanye, which is like, yes, I can empathize with him being sick, but Lex is giving him a chance to speak as a thinker, which is also fine. I don't care. I'm not going to fight this battle. I wouldn't do it because I don't consider Kanye much of a thinker. But I consider him somebody whose situation should be empathized with because he's a human with a real life. And a lot of people are like him and don't have his privilege and money and accessibility. But I think there's obviously something happening with Kanye. And again, we don't have access to objective truth in regards to Kanye's situation because Kanye isn't self-aware enough to explain it to the people around him. But I think that's be probably because of illness more than anything else. And I do think that his illness is probably amplifying the mania from the bipolar because the industry he's in is so conniving and lying and awful. Did you guys see the news with Diddy? Did you see the updated news with Diddy? I mean, I knew it was coming if you guys follow Diddy, but like, oh my God, like no wonder. And I'm not going to explain it here. You got to go look it up. But like, Okay, you think Kanye doesn't know shit? You think Kanye hasn't seen bullshit happen in the music industry? Were you ever a fan of his music? 1,000%. Kanye is an amazing artist. He's a musical genius. He is a, I am never going to talk shit about Kanye's music. Like I will never talk ill about this man's musical career. I've literally been listening to Kanye since I was like, how old guys? Like how old? Like 15 years? Like how old? You know, like my mom used to let us, you know what I mean? Who is Diddy? Ma'am. Girl. Girl, Google girl. Oof, it's insane, girl. But like, like, okay. So again, again, you think, I think what's happening in the best faith way is Kanye's mania is amplifying all the bullshit he knows behind closed doors, which is making which is making him seem crazy because the truth is, is like if you really exposed people and explained everything, it would sound like a conspiracy theory. Oh, people have been saying this about Diddy for years. Like, do you know Diddy does this with people? Do you know this happens? Do you know this? Ha but we don't have proof. Oh my gosh, Weinstein. Like Weinstein, have you heard about why Nobody talks about Bill Clinton. Have you heard about? And then when news comes out, you're like, oh shit. But like everybody knew. Everybody was saying it. Everybody was, but nobody was saying it. So that's why Kanye feels, that's why conspiracy theorists always feel really self-righteous because they're always like 50% true or not. You know, it's because like, again, when you know what's happening behind closed doors because humans are humaning, you know there's lying and deception. You know there's like twistings of truth. You know there's a lot of unconsensual stuff happening. You know there's a lot of things that are going to cause issues. So again, the problem with Kanye is I think he's mixing up real things with like mania, conspiracy theory things. It's why I wonder if a lot of conspiracy theorists are actually just mentally unwell. And co conspiracy theorists sound really good, right? The one I'm expecting any day or year now is Jared Leto. It already came out, girl. Jared Leto run a cult. He's crazy. He's sleeping with people. Jared Leto is out. I stopped listening to Jared Leto and 30 Seconds of Mars and like their whole thing. I could not. Jared Leto freaks me the fuck out now. It came out about Jared Leto. That's what I'm saying. That's what I, listen to me when I say this. Every YouTuber you love who's the top of their game, remember that it's a brand. 
every musician, everyone you know, even the Queen Yonce, she stayed with Jay-Z, didn't she? She played a game. Everybody there is playing a game. Taylor Swift is playing a game. And the game isn't the part that's bad. It's the part that is the reality of human beings. Take, just take the like smallest, this, take this sphere. Take this sphere with like destiny and the drama and everything that happens with Hassan and Vosh and everybody else, right? Take this sphere here, like the smallest like bro debate sphere. Look at all the drama. Look at all the lying. Look at all the twisting of history. Look at all of everyone taking everyone out of context. Now take this small group here, this meaningless group, this ant of a group, and amplify it to Hollywood stars. Now amplify it to music. Now amplify it to the president. Amplify it to global powers. And it's not even evil. It's human. This is just human beings adapting, human beings investing in themselves human beings realizing like we're all gonna die on this planet you might as well like make some money like it's human beings playing a specific game it's why i can't be very upset at them doing it but i am more upset at people for not accepting that it's happening because again like if we accepted it was happening we could probably change it but until we actually believe our favorites are probably doing some shit that's why there's no ethical billionaires okay but that's the thing, you don't want it to change because they're actually doing pretty good for everybody. Good enough, at least, that no one's going to do enough about it. And it will happen again and again and again. It wouldn't matter if these people, like literally like the people in power who you and I could be, but we're not going to do it, right? You could do it. You want to rise to fame? Go ahead. Do it. I'm not going to do it because I would have to do things that are against my values. And that's what I'm saying. Pay attention to your favorites. Pay attention to how they get famous and where they end up and all of those things and pay attention to how they must have gotten there. Who do they network with? Whose parties did they go to? Whose dick did they suck? Whose child did they prostitute? Pay attention. And then remember, it's not about conspiracy theories or elites or anything silly like that. It's about humans being humans. It's happening in your schools. It's happening in your churches. It's happening in your politics. It's happening everywhere. It's happening in your favorite YouTube sphere. But why is it happening? Because humans are traumatized, lacking of introspection, human beings that evolved over time on a planet. We're just a bunch of animals like fighting to be the top of the food chain. And introspective people who are more thoughtful end up being less violent and less power hungry and less interested in money. But they have to get there because they realize this is your only life. You could spend your whole life meditating in grass, chilling by a waterfall. But instead, the majority of us choose working a nine to five and making each other suffer. Sure, I guess that's also a way we can live life. It's not, no, no one is like tricking you. They're doing it in front of you. And you're like, hmm, it's not happening to my favorites though. It's not happening to my favorite YouTubers. It's not happening in my favorite areas. Again, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's just humans being humans. Humans are just people. They're selfish and self-focused and I don't blame them. I wish they would be selfish in a healthy way instead of selfish in a bad way. But it is what it is. Who cares? Live your life. Stop playing these games with people who are always going to throw you under the bus. You know what I'm saying? Also, look up what P. Diddy did because that's crazy. Your words after. Well, yeah, but until it doesn't. Like if Because you, you can, you can, right. you can extend balance, charity right. too far, right? You can, like it can be absolutely obvious what someone's motives really are. Right. And they're they're you know dissembling about that, right? He's such a little virtue signaler. Then bro. He, him and Hassan should hang out. Taking at face value their representations begins mm -hmm. to look like you're just being duped. And ah, in confusion, said nobody needs a billion wealth. It should be dis uh, distributed, but they hoard it. I don't think it should be distributed. I'm not saying they shouldn't have it. I'm saying how did they get it? It's not a matter of needs. Nobody needs anything. We don't even need anything. We could all die. Why do we need food? Why do we need to live? Right? Why do we need to live? This is a philosophy question, not a political one. I'm not politics. Philosophy. Why do we need to live? Can anyone answer that question? Can anyone give me an objective answer to why humans need to exist? Right? And then on top of that, why do humans need anything? Why not? Well, why not? What do you mean? Which why not? Why not to what? You know what I mean? Why not to what? Right? Nobody needs a billion dollars. Great. But like, why not? So again, I don't know what you're what nodding though.
So again, if we don't need to live, then we don't need to stop billionaires. We live to slay. Amen. <laughs> That's true. I think in an ideal world, right, we could make a beautiful world, but we would literally have to, right? We would have to really accept that we had that power all along. The distribution question, why not the distribution? Well, be because you're taking, you're stealing from them. In the same way that you feel like they stole from you, why would you do the same to them? Again, how you treat your enemies is more reflection on your character than anything else. Petty, petty people who, who do petty things, like that's a reflection of themselves, right? So again, when we're asking a big philosophy question, not a political question, because politics is about winning. Philosophy is about wisdom and truth. Remember, these things are very, very different, right? So if you're saying, oh, this billionaire shouldn't have this, even though we are consenting to the system that it created them in the first place, you're saying you're not consenting to yourself. You're saying they can steal from me, I can steal from them, right? Billionaires didn't just become billionaires. They were able to work within a system or move a system in the direction that helped them, contributed by us. They got those billions from the people, right? That led them to that path. Jeff Bezos didn't become Jeff, Jeff Bezos. Like he didn't just become there. You know what I mean? Like he didn't just end up there. Like Bezos didn't just end up Bezos. Like that's not how it happens. It happens because of a collective. J.K. Rowling did become a billionaire because nobody read Harry Potter. J.K. Rowling became a billionaire because we all read Harry Potter. So if we're upset with how they got there, we're upset with ourselves. We are not upset at billionaires. We are upset at ourselves for not understanding how we keep making billionaires. And we keep making billionaires because we keep thinking the responsibility is on the billionaires. It's not. It's not on the billionaires. It's on us. Right? And that's the issue. Right? We shouldn't have billionaires while we have homeless and suffering people. Well, then stop making them. Start giving your money to homeless people instead of billionaires. But you won't. What do you mean? Then give your money to the homeless. But you keep giving it to billionaires. So the world is a reflection of us as a collective. Nothing happens because of billionaires. It is only because they set the thing into motion and we fulfill it that it occurs. But nobody wants to actually face themselves and admit that we all contribute to it. It's not that they're without fault. It's that, that they are playing the game that is different from us. So again, the world as a collective, we, we created the world. We're all responsible, right? And that's just what it is. And you're not, you're not actually doing the work of, of, of putting pressure on a bad actor, you know? So it's, it's, and again, the whole, the mental illness component here makes, makes it very difficult to think about what you should or shouldn't have said to Kanye. Oh, okay. We're done. Damn. Okay. So in general, I understand Sam's position and I understand Lex's position. I think I'm probably less on either of their sides for different reason. I don't want to virtue signal and be like, you can never like platform people that are bad because everyone's bad to somebody, right? Some people would say, Brittany, don't platform sex workers because it's going to encourage people to be sex workers. But like, I'm going to platform sex workers, right? I think it makes sense though, that people might be a little bit more skeptical of Kanye for a multitude of reasons. And I think it makes sense that Lex is compassionate and interested in empathizing with, with Kanye. I think Lex has been a little disingenuous with himself because I don't think there's a part of Kanye that he can latch on to to actually empathize with. Because unless, Fre unless Lex Friedman also has bipolar or something similar, like what are you empathizing with? Like what are you really relating to? What is familiar to you? Is there a part of Kanye that's familiar to you? Which part is it? Is it the artist part? Because I know Lex plays music. Like what part of it are you identifying with with Kanye? You know what I mean? And what in what way are you feeling his pain or his suffering? So I think Lex is being a little disingenuous in that regard. And plus, he seems a little bit um less like he doesn't believe in like mental health, I guess, or something. I don't know. I, I didn't understand that part of Lex's argument. Almost like he said, like, I don't believe in anti-Semitism or racism or mental health. It sounds very conservative. So I don't know what that means, you know. But ultimately, I don't want people deciding who is capable of speaking for themselves. 
I always want to give people agency, you know, with allowing the nuance for sometimes we have to have our trusted family and friends speak for us. Like my husband speaks for me. If I'm ever in a position, we were just talking about amputating my arm. I was like, quick, I have to go to the hospital and they have to amputate my arm. What do you do? He's like, amputate your arm. And I was like, okay, what if you have to amputate all my limbs? What do you do? He's like, amputate all your limbs. And I was like, okay, what if, and then I was running him through scenarios. Like, what do we do? You know, because the idea is that I, we want to make the right decisions for each other. So we have to know what the other person wants. And I don't know if Kanye knows what he wants enough in a reasonable manner for other people to even understand Kanye. You know, I think Kanye wants to be seen, but I don't even know if he sees himself clearly. And that's really difficult, you know? In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Da, 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 da.